How do you uh, keep your hair like that, dude? I mean, I've been having issues today. <laughs> I always shampoo it, then I do it with a crush. He's having a bit no of trouble. No way, crush, hey. He's having no a bit way. of trouble in the wind. Yeah. Shampoo. Oh. You got any tips? What shampoo? Yeah, I shampoo it, then I make it with a crush. Okay, yeah, but what type of shampoo? Any, any, anything specific? Uh, I just anything. any any shampoo. Okay, nice. Yeah. What well, do you use, Tom? I don't know, we got this new egg shampoo that they make out here. It's fucking it's it's messing with the... Well, when you say we, thanks, man. When you say we, who's we? Well, me and the person I'm sharing my apartment with. Oh, okay. <laughs> who, 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 who buys all the hair products? Uh, I got. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha. You need to. Um, no, the other way. Starting with the left. You know, I'm going to do this. Coming up in episode 9. Tom Court joins us as guest host, we hear about the filming of Free Ride Project 2 and he adds his opinions on the features and riders we've got coming up. We get reaction from Kiahi Diaboitas, winner of our 2012 Video of the Year competition from last episode. Tom Court, Aaron Hadlow and James Balding tell us the story behind the concept of the Free Ride Project and a little of what we can expect in Free Ride Project 2. Best have been rapidly expanding their riding team over the last few months, most notably bringing in the likes of Ruben Lenton, Yuri Zoon and Lewis Cradham. We caught up with core team members Ryan Evans, Rich Sabo and Sam Adiski in Cape Town to find out more. We announced the winner of the Best Profanity Board and launched the North Trust Bar competition. The Red Bull King of the Air dominates the news section and we also fill you in on the headlines from the opening rounds of the World Tours. This episode Move of the Month goes American Gangster. Yuri Zoon tells us about the tightest win in PKRA history which gave him the 2012 crown in our new Mystic Moments series. And we round the show out with our 2012 Video of the Year Hawaii sessions from Kiahi Diaboitas. Alright guys, welcome to episode 9. I'm joined here in Cape Town by Tom Court. How you doing Tom? Good thanks man, excited to be on the kite show. Nice to be back in Cape Town, I believe the last time you were here was 2002 with your dad. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've been to uh, Cape Town or South Africa. And uh, this is pretty much where it all started for me, this is where I learned to kite and last time I was here I spent a lot of time with Aaron and Ian and doing some downwinders and uh, you know, just getting into it and I haven't been back since, so it's nice to be here and enjoy it for the summer. Yeah, sounds good. There's loads of people here, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you've got your Free Ride Project boys out, Aaron, Sam, James, yourself. Yeah. Uh, so Free Ride Project 2 is off the ground, is that right? Free Ride Project 2 is off the ground. I mean, that was the, the point of this trip, was to get everybody out here, Sam, James, Aaron, myself. And, uh, and get the project kicked off. Yeah, I'm not sure how long the South African section is going to be, but yeah. it's, on the, it's on the go. Is it quite difficult to coordinate all four of you? I mean, you've obviously all got pretty hectic schedules, but you all managed to be in a few places at the same time. Yeah, the, the most interesting thing I think about the last few years is, was last year and everybody's life getting in the way of what we've been doing and, uh, and how different everybody's life actually is and sort of organising us all, all four of us to be in the same place at the same time and doing the same thing is getting more tricky as, as sort of life develops I guess. I guess there's one person missing though, the kite launcher. I know he's not in the free ride project but he's a pretty integral part of the team isn't he? I mean how are you coping? I mean are you blowing your own kites up and just self launching? I mean what's happening? Well yeah I mean there's been a lot of self launching going on but you know, Aaron, does Aaron he, he not get? He wouldn't like about that. He wouldn't like that. Definitely wouldn't like that. But you know, it's at the beginning he was what made it happen, and uh, and now it's you know we've just got to go on without him. I mean he's a busy guy these days. So uh. well, you know, life is tricky sometimes, Tom. And um, and and coming up next, we've got another tricky subject for you. Yeah. Uh, last episode we ran the video of the year project. Yeah. If anyone was following it online, Free Road Project, Kiahi, Hawaii Sessions videos, they were neck and neck for so long. Tom, you put so much effort into it. 
and um, unfortunately just on the last day Kiahi Ki nipped in yeah. I mean uh, can you be the mega man and, uh, and and offer him some congratulations well yeah I mean you know it's a big obviously a big thing to win this video vote I had a lot of hopes on it pretty gutted uh, we didn't win but next time you know next year I'm thinking of producing you know the three minute video and Ooh, to, was harsh. you know I'm hoping to take having to take the web video of the year but also you'll be able to see the free ride project too as a full length movie well congratulations Kiahi one man four minutes took down four guys 24 minutes long well done mate let's have a few words from you Hey guys, it's Kiahi Dave Boydus here. Just wanted to say a big thanks to everyone who voted for my video for the video of the year. I actually shot this video back in March and April last year. Spent a lot of time on, on Hawaii and was getting pretty stoked with my writing so I thought I, I should try and do something with it. I guess the reason this video did so well is it was basically the start of kind of the new rotations. Everyone was already doing the front rolls and I felt like I just had to add my twist to it. It was pretty funny. I remember being on Maui. It was some of the first times that I actually started trying these rotations and was getting pretty comfortable with the front row rotations and was looking for something different. And Sky Solback actually asked me, like, have you ever tried any, any front to blinds? And I was like, no. Nah. And ended up just going out and surprisingly they work. Really stoked with, with the front roll shove it clip. That took a lot of work and a lot of attempts. Well that trick is just so hard to dial in. You have to have everything right. The timing, wind and just super stoked to get that clip on film. Also some of the funny clips I remember having the the one day on Oahu the wind was super strong and really gusty and remember I landed a, a pretty good air and I was really stoked and just went to loop the kite and ended up getting hit by a 25 30 knot gust and just got Long. I remember being upside down in the air, flying over JB who was shooting photos and watching my kite hit the water before me. That's It's never a good feeling seeing that happen. A big thanks to the guys that helped shoot and put this video together. A big thanks to Rio Stevens and Elliot Lebeau for shooting and then Anders Kruger for putting together a really good edit. Couldn't have made such a good video without you guys. So up next, Free Road Project 2. Yeah, it's pretty slick. This is us being interviewed by... Me. That was pretty slick, wasn't it? That was pretty slick. <laughs> <laughs> pretty slick. I couldn't have said slick more than that. I know. Slick. So, what, here? Where's uh, the three? Where's uh... Oh, well, we had a few issues with Sam. Yeah, yeah. He, he might be a bit late. Is yeah. this pretty much how it how it how it rolls with the free road project? Well, well, not normally. You know, normally there's four of us. <laughs> we but, are usually you know. a crew of four. But yeah, gotta, gotta is, make it, is it usually Sam that's a little bit? Sam's probably 99 percent of the time the one that we're waiting for. How, yeah. how did it how did it all come together? Obviously, not not many people make 25 minute videos anymore they're all mm. short web videos mm. was was that part of the obviously inspiration for you guys S seeing videos i think i think pushing the video the video aspect of kiteboarding and how kiteboarding looks was was always on our it's always what we all wanted to do i mean yeah, yeah. it's yeah. missing in kiting that's the thing yeah. like, there's no like real long decent videos we always yeah. like watch autofocus yeah. and all like the dvds that came out some of the channel and stuff yeah and nothing's been like that everyone's doing their online little web clips and it's kind of like mm. It's just a bit too common now, mm -hmm. and we wanted to do something different. Mm. And like Tom said, we never really expected it to go yeah. yeah, as it did. And yeah. I think a lot of a lot of videos lose their uh, lose their soul mm. and their meaning because you know not not everyone in it is mm. involved in producing mm. it. And I think that was a big yeah. part of, of yeah. what we. It made. helps having two guys who are like pretty into it as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, like well, we, did, we did have to make sure that they were separated fairly like nicely. Like, yeah, yeah, it had to absolutely. be like me and James or me and Tom or <laughs> Sam and like one of these two. Yeah. To make Sam, sure it was to make sure it worked because if it was yeah. me and Sam together like these boys would ride their ass yeah. up and we'd just end up with a couple of clips. <laughs> 
In a, lo in a lot of kiteboarding web videos, they're released, you know, the next week or the next yeah. Yeah. couple of weeks with the latest move. Is there, how are you making it timeless so that when it's released in six months' time, well, the moves that's one of like free riding. Like free riding. <laughs> yeah, like free riding. I don't know. I, I think that, that our videos, you know, as well as being about the technical aspect yeah. of kite surfing, as well as being about, you know, having fun whilst you're doing it, it's also about, like, just representing the, you know, the what we want to do in kite surfing. Yeah. I think if you're doing something for the enjoyment of it, it's always going to be more timeless than if you're doing yeah. something for the recognition of it. I mean, yeah. we're not, we're just doing it because we want to do it. Because it is as much about the production. I mean, the riding yeah. obviously is amazing, but the production as well. So have you got, have you got a hit list of places that you're going to be this year or is that still I mean, you were saying earlier Tom when we were filming that you try and keep it as free as you can yeah definitely keep it fresh definitely I mean I I think the schedule for as far as this video project goes is definitely still open and open to suggestion from everyone like, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think that's the only reason our scheduling works is because that we are also open and if one of us says let's go here like Three of us, at least three of us, can like jump on board and go. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, go here yeah, and film yeah. a section, you know. So, hopefully, we'll hit a few few spots. Maybe Peru, maybe a few different different things that people haven't seen too much of. It'd be great to do a UK thing, because yeah. I think there is still parts of the UK that people don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And definitely. if we can actually put our spin on it, then it will give you know a lot of credibility, not just to the riders that are from the UK, but to also some yeah. of the spots and yeah. like a bit about the country that we all come from and all kind yeah. of grew up riding. To show how good the UK actually is. Yeah. yeah and so bringing other people in a little bit maybe this year as well. Yeah, like, so. you, like guest sections. Okay. Or. So did the um, did did how did the uh, brands go with it? I know we've talked before yeah. about how it was quite difficult perhaps to convince that a 24 minute video was good. Yeah. You obviously had helicopters last time. Yeah. You know, you flew in the big choppers. I've seen you practicing with your radio control chopper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The budgets down a bit. Are they this time? Well, <laughs> no, it's not that the budgets down a bit. I mean, I think a big. A ma like a massive part of the last video was the fact that it wasn't all like strictly brand motivated. That mm -hmm. all of us are riding for different brands, and yeah, uh, that's cool. You know, that. that it was a collaborative effort, and everybody mm -hmm. got involved. You yeah. don't feel like you happen to be doing something. You mm -hmm. know, like we do these trips to have fun, and at the same time we're trying to progress our riding. Yeah. You know? So when you go on a video trip, you really feel like you're kind of pressured to ride a lot more. Yeah. Maybe you don't have as much fun on the trips. Like yeah. when we go together, our goal is to go there. You know, push each other's riding have a wicked time on the water yeah. but at the same time we know we it. want to document yeah. it but we get to do it in our, in our own yeah. way you know? yeah. so so there's no 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 real structure you're gonna you're gonna cruise around do we know when it's gonna be finished <laughs> no. Well, no there's no there's no real end day and you know it's only just started so really it's blank yeah. canvas i guess we should all be free riders i mean this is, this is i tell you what it's a lot harder than it sounds. It, it, yeah, it is. is. Yeah. To, to finish something that should, doesn't need to be I mean, finished. I mean, it's how it, how, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's almost impo it's an impossible task. Yeah. Because, yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope we don't come across as lazy. <laughs> <laughs> but it gets down to make <laughs> yeah, that We always said that in Australia, man. We would turn up to the beach at like 6 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning, go for a session for like 2 hours, film it, but no one would be there. Everyone else would turn up. We would just be leaving the beach. Nobody would ever see us ride, and everybody used to think we were, <laughs> we, everyone used to think we were the most lazy really? bunch yeah. of bastards <laughs> around. And we're like, "What the f hell are you guys doing out here, just cruising about, <laughs> chilling, blah blah blah?" And then when the video came out, it was either too early, early or too late, or like too saying? late to the beach, and then yeah. everyone had gone home. Yeah. It's just a joke, this free ride thing, isn't it? You all like up at five in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fine. Oh, we're serious about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. serious about it. I mean, if you can be a free skier. You can be a free rider in kiteboarding. Exactly, yeah. free snowboarder. They're all the same. They set their alarms for four o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. Yeah. They're up. They're up at four. They're filming at five. They're at bed by eight, and they're getting drunk yeah. by six. <laughs> <in the evening. laughs> they're yeah. all the same. Start, start early, finish early. Exactly. Yeah. That's what happens when you get older. That's Jeez. that's free riding in a nutshell. So the free ride project two. After the success of the free ride project one, now it'd be rude not to. It's hard though, yeah, because I just know how this free riding deal is. It's, it's quite good fun. This is where it had to begin. This is where the project had to start. And I think it has started. I think this, this next project's going to be pretty tame. Oh mate, stop hugging the rug! How do you see that? Alright boys, how's it going? Good mate. Where's Jim? 
Oh, I knew it'd be late. He's always late, that bloke. <laughs> Should we get this interview started, then? <laughs> So you don't, you don't mind changing seats, do you, Jim? You don't mind? No, well, I was just gonna, I was just gonna explain to people a little bit about why we've had to change. Obviously, the wind usually is a is a southeaster. Yeah, the wind's a funny direction today. Yeah, it's a weird direction, and it's uh, playing you know, havoc with the old. Uh, normally, I'd sit there, but the fringe needs to sit. You know. So we're good from now on. Yeah, we're good. We're okay. good. So the next thing I was going to talk about was um, I've got a chapter coming up with the best team. Obviously, yeah. they've expanded their team massively yeah. over the last couple of months. I think everybody won't have failed to have noticed that. But it's really impressive when you see them all turn up at the beach, and yeah. you know they, they've got they've got media guys, they've got designers, they've got everyone else here. But this is what's so good about this place as well, isn't it? I mean, yeah. North do that as well, and and everybody seems to get on really well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's one thing that makes South Africa such a good spot at this time of year is the fact that there's so many different teams from different brands out here as long, along with designers and you know other people from in the industry so it's a great place to be and we've spent the last few weeks riding and hanging out with the guys from Best and all the new te team riders and changes that have been going on with them it's pretty interesting. Cool well I caught up with them on top of the Kite Worldwide mansion in Sunset Beach to see what they had to say. Cheers. Right, here we are on another howling Cape Town afternoon and I'm here joined with uh, some of the best team. We've got Rich Sabo, Ryan Evans, Sam Madiski. Um, you guys, uh, recently the, the, the team has, has really swelled. You've got a really, really impressive team. And, uh, and it's a huge undertaking. I mean, you guys have got a lot of, a lot of riders over here now. Um, ha has it been all about getting a team to gel? There's some big characters in there. Um, some of the new names and obviously Sam, who's, who's um, been around for a while with the team. How, how's, it, how's it worked out? Yeah, since uh, I joined the team in 2008, uh, one of the great things about it that I think made the best team stand out different from a lot of the other teams was just uh, the team person. I mean, all of us got along outside of riding and video shoots and photo shoots. We were all friends. Um, so I think the big core thing that we want to be able to keep uh, as we, you know, build the team to be, you know, literally the best in kiteboarding um, is, you know, get the best talent that we can, but also get the best talent that sees where we're going, um, you know, is in line with that direction, and then we all work together to get there. So it's really kind of just managing these kind of smaller little things. Uh, you know, one person wants lighter bar pressure, somebody else wants heavier. Um, now, they're both awesome, amazing riders, but how do you mitigate that? And how do you make it so that, you know, the product you're making isn't only good for, you know, the best world champions, but the best end consumer as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot to, to, to manage, but at the same time, uh, being able to get those perspectives on the product uh, and get people who are you know, some of the highest demanding riders in the industry, yeah. if you can make them happy, well then you know, we're very confident we're going to be able to make the end customer happy. Um, and it's interesting that you came out to Cape Town, I mean, um, I believe this is the first time you've come out, isn't yeah. it, for, 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 for all of you, isn't it? Yeah. Sam, how have you found the riding? I mean, you can literally just turn up the beach and it's, it's howling all the time, the, the riding standard is great, there's loads of riders out, has it, has it been all you thought it would be? It's a little bit different than what I thought, I came from Brazil where it's, you know, prime conditions every day, 9 meter, 11 meter kite, flat water, and then you come to Cape Town and you can find those conditions but you have to do a bit of a drive, but the nice thing is you can always go out at Kite Beach or at um, Big Bay and I mean it starts off a little bit mellower in the morning and then by the afternoon most of the time you're stacked on a 7 or a 9 and going to the moon. You're about to enter the Red Bull King of the Air, a total, totally unique event, standalone. Um, have you been practicing for that a lot? I mean, I'm guessing that you don't get to practice in these conditions a lot of the time. Yeah, no, I haven't actually been out in, I mean, this strong a wind in probably a couple of years now, but I've been here with Lewis for the past three weeks and training with him a bit and then out with Ruben and Yuri as well. So getting a little bit of time on the water and kind of figuring out um, the right ways of going about this wind. Good luck with that. Um, <laughs> You're doing a good job. Yeah. Um, but uh, innovation-wise, you're talking about gear and, and whatnot, but for you guys, I know that it's important to always move forward in other areas as well. Uh, and you guys, uh, Rich and Ryan, hosted the first live product launch yeah. last year. Now, I mean, I know obviously when we do the kite show, everything happens pretty much in one take, so, <laughs> so it's all fine. But obviously live, I mean, I would, I would literally crap myself doing it live. I mean, how, how are you feeling about it? Whose idea was it? Was it a good idea? You know, like for me personally, I always try and not stress about anything till the time comes. And for that live webcast, like I, I could feel the tension beforehand. 
you know, we're trying to get this first industry first, you know, live product launch going, and there's a lot of moving parts going on. You got to make sure that your internet connection's working in a in the middle of nowhere where we live, which is a big stress. You know, make sure all the products there, make sure that you know your camera switches are going right. So when it actually came, you know, push to shove, it, it was definitely stressful, and I could even feel when we started, you know, the actual webcast. We were all talking really fast, nervous, sweating a lot. Um, but uh, <laughs> and it was a fun experience though. And then as it, you kind of got that initial, uh, you know, initial talking out of the way, you were able to kind of get into the groove of things, and I think it turned out pretty well. We can look forward to another one. Uh, yeah, I think, I think no, undoubtedly we're going to do more live webcasts in the future, and uh, we're working right now on, you know, kind of getting everything structured for the 2014 product launch, you know, about six, seven months ahead of time, so now's the planning stages. Back next year? Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Awesome, alright guys, well thanks very much for your time, have a good flight back, Sam have a good competition, yeah, thanks. and uh, yeah. Craig Sawyer, Cannonball Run Europe, in recognition of your valuable contribution, devotion and excellence. Mm. Okay guys, I feel ready to go for a take. Notable Networker Award. Again, good production partner there. Okay. Hi guys, we are in the Kite Show Editing HQ in sunny Horsham, UK. We are busy editing episode 9 as we speak, but we wanted to keep the best profanity board competition open for as long as possible, so we've only just made the draw. And the winner that we picked out was... It's Andreas Muth from Germany, so well done to you. Best are going to be in touch very soon about your prize. For now, I'm going to hand back to me in Cape Town with Tom, and we're going to give you details on the North Prize for episode 9. For now, I'm going to get back to learning about video hub routers. Nice. So, Tom, uh, North are giving away a bar in the competition for this episode, yeah. which is all very nice. Now, I'm a big fan of the North bar. It's yeah. nice and clean. Yeah. Uh, loads of functionality going on it. It's got a chicken loop. It it's got a release. It's, it's got, got bar ends. A few really good features. Mm. Yeah, Do you want to take us through yeah. a couple? Well, it's got, uh, it's got definitely the easiest and safest uh, safety release on the market, the Iron Heart. Iron Heart. And, uh, yeah. It's got uh, adjustable bar length at the end where you can flip it around whilst you're riding. It's got line length adjusters that you can do also whilst you're riding. It's got an exchangeable uh, centerpiece in the middle there. So oh, that's uh, a nice touch. Reduces wear nice on, the, uh, on the middle line. And, and the silky smooth uh, trimming system. Yeah, and a, and a great, great trimming system. Yeah, and a good, uh, good cleat that really uh, grips your centre line. So. so, to be in with a chance of winning uh, one of these bars, uh, five line or four line, whatever takes you fancy. Um, all you need to do is head to our Facebook fan page, hit the episode nine tab on there, and answer the question: What is North Classic fifth line system? Any ideas, Tom? I don't know, it could be the name of a very famous movie. Oh, there's a hint. This is Kiteboarding's World News. Two rounds have already been completed out of a possible five on this year's Kiteboard Tour Asia. Now in its fourth season, the KTA visited Indonesia for the first time for round one with an incredible week of action from the beautiful island of Bintan from the 20th to the 24th of February. A record number of 123 riders entered the freestyle, race board, twin tip race and weekend warrior competitions and none were left disappointed with good wins all week. This was also the first event that the KTA carried points towards both the ISAF and the IKA world rankings. The 
ITA was formed to give an international platform for the skills and talents of kiteboarders throughout Asia and to bring professional level competition and training to the region. The event in Thailand is a good example of this as the Pat Nam Pran event in Pranbury follows the KTA National Championship in Hua Hin the weekend before, meaning that the Thai riders have to make just one journey to the area for two events. It's with initiatives like this that the KTA hope to give the sport a solid foundation to grow from in the future. This is the fourth time the KTA has visited Pranbury in Thailand and although the week didn't see as much wind as previous seasons, there were some good conditions for the races and the single elimination freestyle ladders were completed. The KTA is in Boracay in the Philippines for round three as we're putting this together, so head to their website for the results, images, videos and more. The KSP World Wave Tour will return for its third season, kicking off in June at Gincho Beach in Portugal. The tour will once again round off at Hakipa, Maui at the end of November, with two new exciting venues nestled in between those dates at Gran Canaria and Puerto Rico. The first round of the 2013 PKRA season in Dakla, Morocco came to an exciting conclusion after a solid few days of competition in great conditions for both the freestyle and wave disciplines. The standard for the freestyle competition this year is incredible. Even making it to the main event feels like winning a competition itself. And when the likes of Forrest Backer, Michael Shitsoff and Valentin Garrett don't qualify, you know it's tough. Controversy hit the single eliminations when current world champion Yuri Zun was disqualified close to the end of his heat with Lewis Hutter, as it was a judge that he hadn't left enough room to land his trick and ran into Lewis's crash kite. Yuri had been way ahead on points in that heat and then found himself having to work his way back up through six consecutive heats in the doubles just to get on the podium, which he eventually did, but lost out in the semis to the immensely powerful Kiwi Mark Jacobs, who managed to defeat Yuri by just 0.1 of a point. We wouldn't have fancied judging that. Really amazing heat eh? against Mark and Yuri. Mark did some like the secret from Blimo I've seen in a while, he really stumped it and Yuri just did an amazing 317. So I think it's, uh, it's a tight heat, it's uh, interesting. <laughs> Winner up for the last three seasons, Alex Pastor won the singles and then also won the doubles against Mark, claiming a clean top spot for the event. In the women's side, current world champion Karolina Winkowska from Poland kept the coolest under pressure, landing more tricks more fluidly and consistently than either Gisela Polito or Bruna Kajir, who finished second and third respectively. The PQRA also hosted a wave event at Dakla, which saw siblings Yalu and Kevin Langare take the wins, perhaps surprising many with some excellent backside riding in very challenging conditions. Look out for Kevin entering wave and freestyle events this year. The guy is a mad talent. We did it! Yes, yes, yes. So stoked to take a win here. It's, uh, it's awesome. Didn't really expect it. There's a lot of good riders out there and um, got a couple of fun ones. I'm stoked. They always ask like, how does it look? And should I change something? And we always kind of, Try to give each other tips and stuff, and yeah, that works out. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky enough to be invited onto the event committee and judging team for the Red Bull King of the Air that took place in early February. The last King of the Air ran eight years ago and Red Bull decided to drop the event as it hadn't been bringing anything new and Red Bull liked to be associated with progression. Ruben Lenton and Robbie Nash both did a lot to convince them over the last six months that the time was right to bring the event back, with big air moves carrying more consequence and with riders able to handle much stronger wins through vast improvements in equipment. Robbie Nash was flown over by Red Bull from Hawaii to add his weight of integrity and he seemed pretty amped to be there on the sunset cruise from Cape Town that opened the contest window. The, the history of the King of the Air, obviously, you know, for the sport of kite surfing, the King of the Air in Maui was like the first big event back when the sport wasn't even really a sport. You know, we had like 25 guys in the world that could even really do it and we had the first King of the Air and it became a really big part of kite surfing. You guys are all the best in the world at this aspect sport which is going to be great to see you guys killing it in the conditions that are on the way. You know it's going to be killer for the sport. Good for you guys. Thanks Ruben again for the concept and keeping things fresh and always pushing. And um, yeah, don't hurt yourselves. <laughs> uh, thank you Ruben.
I caught up with contenders Sam Light and Sam Madiski on the cruise, and Gianni Aragno and Kevin Langeray on Sunday morning, just moments before the event kicked off to get their early reactions. So how are you, uh, what sort of winds are you looking forward to? You're just hoping it's like more 40 knots, more 30 knots? What? Nobody can unhook. I'm a, that's what I'm going for at this point. I mean, there's some people here, you know, I got Billy Parker, Jesse Richmond, I mean, if it's windy, windy, they can, you know, unhook, do a bunch of different kite loop passes, but I'm hoping no one can even unhook, you know, 40, 50, just hold on tight, basically. To be honest, literally, they have invited 24 of the best big air guys in the world, so, you know, it's anyone's for the taking, to be honest. You know, I could not even pick out five individuals. There is 10, 15, even 20 that guys that could all do it on the right day, you know. So how are you feeling, Johnny? We're here, morning of the Red Bull. Got half an hour to go till the first first event. Are you excited? I'm super excited. I'm feeling kind of relaxed because it's going to be for sure a special day for kiteboarding. Uh, and we're going to see some amazing things going up. It's uh, so cool to uh, have the Red Bull King of the Air back and um, the conditions are looking awesome. I'm super stoked to, uh, stoked the event is in, in Cape Town, actually on the spot where I uh, usually ride. And um, yeah, everyone is getting ready and uh, it's going to be an exciting day. And you got the boss watching you obviously as well, so you got to do well, right? Exactly, there's some pressure on my shoulders, but that's alright. And so, to the event itself. Welcome to Big Bay, Cape Town, South Africa. We're only three days into the waiting period of the Red Bull King of the Air, and it is firing. The forecast is for 25 to 35 knots southeasterly today. We've got a three to four meter swell running. It's sunny, it's absolutely perfect. The 24 riders are chomping at the bit to get out there and show their stuff. That was Robbie Nash's official intro to what is being hailed as the biggest event ever seen in kiteboarding. Plus, it was largely felt that the sport needed a big air event like this. Kitesurfing isn't wakeboarding or surfing, and yet for years we haven't had an event that showcases the best of our unique attributes. We have now a new 20 minute heat format with the lowest performing rider flagged out after 10 minutes and a second at the end of the heat which left two to advance was a success. The spectacle was superb, the crowds loved it and the riders, although shattered, were ecstatic. Big Bay produced what South Africa had promised. PKRA world champion Yuri Zoon was the first rider flagged out in the final after 10 minutes, leaving these three guys to battle it out and I caught up with them once they'd stepped off the podium. The judging was, you know, that we were looking for that, that was one big trick, you know, and you kept pulling it out, you know, you didn't necessarily do as many tricks, but you were timing it perfectly and getting that kite so low. Yeah, that, you know, that's what I, I kind of took note of that in, in the judging criteria and really, really tried to make sure I had at least one big move each 10 minute segment during the heat to make sure, I, you know, I'd always advance. Well, you, pl you played it well. You had some big tricks, you had a massive wipeout as well. I mean, you came down so hard on your, on your ribs while the kite was still out there. How's that feeling? <laughs> that was actually pretty painful. That's probably one of the worst wipeouts I've ever had, actually. I'm glad I was still able to compete, to be honest, because it really did knock the wind out of me. I, it was one of those ones where you sort of check you still got your arms and your legs, and I can still breathe, my heart's still going, I'm good. I'll carry on. So, you know, during that heat, I was like, fuck, I've got to go back out and throw some more big moves, you know, to keep going. So yeah. that thing you spun another huge, huge one out not long after. Yeah, I know, it kind of was a bit of a, a mind game for me then, especially that trick, and I knew it was a big trick because it's quite a technical, you know, trick, especially with the kite low, um, and I just thought I had to get straight back out there and go do another one. Perfect, mate, well done. Thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. Keeping up for the Brits, eh? Yeah, UK representative. Yeah. We saw it a bit last year, the one foot, but this year that, that kite was getting so low as well. It was an in, insane as any other loop, but you're bringing the foot out as well. Have you been working on it all year? Uh, kind of. I got to Cape Town a month ago, and um, since I got here, I've just been tra training my one footers. I didn't know like how they were going to score in the, in the King of the Air, but for me, it's just fun. It's pure fun, and uh, I love doing it. Yeah. And the the, fi the final was intense. I mean, you know, the the, the format is 20 minutes. How, how is 20 minutes when you get into the end of it and then having to do a final? I think 20 minutes that's way too long. I mean, the first 10 minutes that's okay, but uh, then I yeah I really needed a break. My legs became jelly and I couldn't stand on my board anymore. And but um, yeah, I definitely needed a break. Survival of the fittest in the end, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. Cool, mate. Awesome. Well, well done. Great to see you on the podium. Thanks, Jim.
What a day, man. That was just mind-blowing. This is the sickest event in kiteboarding I've ever witnessed. I mean, so cool to be a part of it. I've looked at the King of the Air, you know, when it happened on Maui. It was like, I was like 10, 11, 13, like when it was happening. And it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen in kiteboarding. That was the reason I got so pumped on it. And to see it come back and to be able to come to the event, be invited to the event, and then to come and win it is like... A dream come true. I, I can't even explain how awesome and stoked I feel. Did you did you have a plan coming into it? This this event like this hasn't been run with this intensity and extremity for a long time. But what you brought was something different. Did you did you have a plan? Yeah, my whole style of the last few years has been trying to take like the the freestyle riding that everyone does and go big with it. Do kite loops with it. Just try and make it look extreme and. That's what everyone here was doing and that's what the concept of this event was to have it be extreme and it was the sickest thing ever. I mean, that to me changed kiteboarding. How did you hold on to those big sizes when you were unhooking? I mean, that is intense. God, that was ridiculously hard. I didn't didn't think I could do it, but actually unhooked a few times. That was so incredibly overpowered, but held on and let go once and that hurt for sure, but but held on for the rest of the time and was stoked, so. Well, well done, mate. You brought something so good to this event. Yeah. Well done. So, thank you. What now? Oh. Beard. <laughs> Go find some Red Bull girls, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a bed and some Vicodin first. <laughs> All right, we'll have a good one. Well done, mate. You can read the full story from the Red Bull King of the Air, including interviews with Robbie Nash and Jesse Richmond in Kite World Issue 62, out now. Right, up next time we got a uh, move of the month. Yeah. This time it's a US wake style. We're going American Gangster. Yeah. You've been. Uh, it's going to be a big section. You you've been uh, to the US quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, ridden over there a lot in contests. What's your take on the scene over there? Yeah, I mean America is like it's a really good place to go over, and they hold some big events there every year. They've got the Triple S, they've got the Rosham Throwdown, and they're all wake style orientated, sort of slider focused events which is which is something quite special in kite surfing and it's something that's quite difficult to get and you know not that many people are, are into it but that's really taking off in the states and it's good to see the UK guys starting to travel and a lot of them are out here in South Africa this season and it's been great to sort of go over there in the last few years ride with those guys and then see them progress and expand out of out of just America and yeah. it's good to see the American scene doing well why, why do you think they focus on that so much is it because the conditions there are perfect for it or are they heavily influenced by it because of wakeboarding or why do you think it is? Yeah I think the biggest factor is probably sort of the influences in America and a lot of that is within wakeboarding and they've got a lot of cable parks over there and they've got people like you know Parks Bonifay and all the wakeboard guys that have yeah. been setting a standard and, a, and an example for years and I think that's had a big effect on the on the kite scene in the States and now they're bringing that to Europe I guess. Okay cool well we got some of the best U.S. Wake style is competing in Move of the Month. Uh, vote for your favourite on the Facebook fan page. Hi, I'm Brandon Chide. You're here at beautiful Hood River, Oregon. The trick I'm bringing you this week is a Method 313. It's a technical grab variation on a pretty standard trick in kiteboarding. I think the reason why I like it so much is uh, by adding the method grab in there, it really sets it out from everyone else's kiteboarding and just adds that extra little steeze factor. Yeah. Hey, this is Chris Bobrick. I'm from Muskegon, Michigan. My trick is, uh, my waist style trick is a blind judge five with a grab. Uh, it's a trick for shot in Kambuco, Brazil. Um, I like this trick because it's a technical trick with the grab. So, check it out. Yo, what's up everybody? I'm Eric Reinstra, I'm from Kings Beach, California. My move of the month is the s mode. I really like this trick because you get to stall halfway through the rotation and it's pretty relaxed dropping into the front side three after that. It's a real fun trick to add a grab to and just feels amazing when you stomp it, so 
Get out there and throw it. Hey, what's up? My name's Jesse Richmond. I'm from Maui, Hawaii. One of my favorite things to do is go out in really windy conditions and just throw a huge kite loop three. It's special to me because it incorporates all the crazy aspects of kiteboarding and throws into one big crazy little boom. What's up guys? This is Reed Brady here. I've been out of commission for a little while. Just got back on the water. Here's a back mode. Right, up next we've got a new mini-series in association with our series sponsor Mystic and it's called Mystic Moments. Because I, uh, because I lost in the singles, I, uh, I had to fight my way back up in the doubles, and, uh, which I did in the end. So we came down to like a, a super final, so I had to win uh, twice from Alex. So I won the first, um, first uh, double final, and then in the second one we were just like pretty much just, I don't know, back to back, like trick, trick after trick, trick after trick, and we were with the scores as well, we were pretty close. But then um, I think, um, I don't know, just before the buzzer went off, I was all the way at the back of the competition area and I did a, a massive double double back roll pass and uh, I landed clean, the kite super low, a lot of power in it and you know I think that was just like just a, the little extra points that I needed to, to go over Alex and you know we knew it was that close was because we know each other's tricks and we know what we can do and how we ride and we can see each other riding sometimes and what kind of tricks he does. But in the end, it was like uh, 0.16 point of a difference, and you know, uh, a difference like that is it's just insane how small it is. But in the end, I think like I think we both belong in that final. I think we were like really like you know we were like up there, both on the same level almost. And you know, in the end, uh, I think a final should be like that with with that small of a difference. And you know, in the end. Uh, a small difference uh, can just be enough to, to take the world title home and, and I'm, I'm happy uh, it went my way. Alright guys, thanks for watching episode 9, thanks to our episode sponsors and thanks to Mystic for being a series sponsor. Tom, thanks to you for all your help this afternoon. Have you enjoyed it? I have, thank you for having me on the kite show, it's been, uh, it's been good. It's been a pleasure, it's been an experience for me, I mean I feel like I've learned a lot about the inside workings of what it is being a professional videographer in the industry, you know. Yeah, well, people underestimate it, obviously, because uh, it looks like it's all good fun, but you know, there is a lot of uh, professionalism involved and getting four guys in one room is harder than it looks. Well, cheers to free ride. Uh, straw with that. Oh yeah, uh, well, hold on. Oh, well, right there. Oh, f*** it. Cheers. <laughs>
it'll be fine as long as you don't put it in your mouth. Are you recording?